Hi you guys, welcome back. Happy New Year. I hope you guys had a wonderful holiday season. I know I spent my most of my time with my family and just really enjoying every moment of the holidays. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Jennifer and I post beauty, fashion, and lifestyle videos. So if you like that type of content, definitely hit the subscribe button. I'd love for you to stick around. For today's video, I wanted to bring you guys something a little bit different. I always think it's important to have goals in life. It's kind of what keeps me going. It's something to strive for and your goals can be big or small. And I know every new year, January 1st, everybody always sets their resolutions. I don't really like the word resolutions. I prefer goals or achievements. So if you guys want to stick around for a really good motivational video, then keep on watching. So in this video, I am going to give you guys five tips on how to achieve your goals for this year. Now, whether your goal is big or small, tip number one is for sure to be consistent. Now, I know a lot of people on January 1st, you know, run to the gym by gym membership and then three weeks in, they're not going as often as they should be. And by six months later, they're just not going and they're paying for a gym membership. So no matter what your goals are, it's so important to stay consistent. Maybe your goal for the year is to lose 50 pounds, or maybe it's to pay off that $10,000 credit card that you have. No matter what your goal is, consistency is key. And I know that just sounds ridiculous but it's true and one way to stay consistent is to set up mini goals for yourself so going back to the credit card example if you want to pay off ten thousand dollars in credit card debt in one year instead of looking at the full big picture scale it down and maybe set your goal to pay off a thousand dollars Per month or maybe even going as far as budgeting $500 per paycheck if you get paid twice a month to that credit card and that way it's a little goal every two weeks or every month to help you stay on track same thing with fitness if your goal is to lose 50 pounds for the year maybe you set yourself up with a weekly goal maybe your goal every week is to lose one pound because there's about basically 52 weeks in the year. So that'll help you stay on track. Sometimes when we dwell on the big picture, it can become overwhelming, it can become stressful. So if you just take a step back and set mini goals for yourself, it'll help you stay on track, be consistent and achieve your goals. Tip number two is to plan. Whether this is planning your food for the week if you're on a fitness goal or planning a budget because you want to pay off debt or maybe even you're trying to build a business and you want to set up a business plan. Planning will help you stay on track and it'll also help you be consistent. So tip number one and tip number two really go hand in hand together and I'm going to share with you some of my favorite ways to plan. So I use a planner all the time. I know some people prefer a paper planner, others prefer their phone. No matter what you choose, just make sure it works for you and it's something that you can look at every single day. I personally love the day designer planners. I've used them for years and years and years. It has a breakdown of a monthly calendar and a daily calendar to-do list and it just makes staying on track very, very easy. What I do every night before I go to bed, I write down all the things that I wanna do the next day, and then I have it open in the morning and I can just start knocking out my to-do list. Once you do that, it just helps you feel so accomplished and it just helps you get that one more step towards your goal. If you are somebody that struggles with finances or just trying to tackle the debt, especially I know credit card debt is really big right now, getting a budget planner can be so helpful. One of the great things about a budget planner is it really shows you what your income is and what you're spending your money on. A lot of people don't realize where their money is going. They just live paycheck to paycheck. And if you're going to Starbucks for that $5 or $8 cup of coffee every single day, 
that is a lot of money at the end of the week and at the end of the month and at the end of the year. And people sometimes don't realize how quickly those small purchases add up. So staying on track with your budget can be very, very beneficial to you achieving your goal. One budget planner that I really love is from Clever Fox. It looks like this. It has a monthly calendar on this side that you write in. It has all of your bills on this side. And then at the top, it has what your income and your expenses are. So it just really helps you to stay on track, to see what your bills are, when they're due, and you can create a budget for yourself. Another great tool is mint.com. It's the same thing as a budget planner if you prefer an electronic version. If you are self-employed or you're starting a business, the best program I can recommend to you is QuickBooks. I use that myself. I've used it for a while. I absolutely love it. You can connect your credit or debit cards to the program itself. So that way, every time you swipe your card or something gets returned, it automatically logs it on QuickBooks. So that way you're not manually inputting expenses or income. It's super, super easy to use. I will leave a link to the QuickBooks website down below in case you guys were interested. I think right now they are having an offer where you get 50% off your first three months. And if you sign up using my referral link, then you will also get a $50 Visa gift card, which is awesome. So if you're interested, I'll leave it down below. I think it's also a great website for personal finance, even though you're not a business. It's just so easy. My third tip for you is educate yourself. No matter what you are trying to achieve this year, I'm sure there's a book, a podcast, a video, something on it where you can learn a little bit more about the topic. So going back to my example on credit cards, if you are in debt and you're wanting to know how to pay off your credit card debt, what is your credit score about, what, what's the difference between an APR percentage and an APY percentage. There are so many, so many books on finances. If you are more of a visual person, I highly recommend checking out Graham Stephan's YouTube channel. I love his channel. He is a finance channel and he just offers such great tips and tricks on how to um, take a hold of your finances. If you are a beginner and you don't know where to start, you don't even know much about terminology or that you have several different credit scores, stuff like that, I highly recommend this book right here. It is called Napkin Finance by Tina Hay. I love this book for several reasons. One, it is so easy to understand the various topics that she talks about. She really breaks it down so that way beginners have a great understanding about different finances. She really breaks it down so that way beginners can learn the different types of finances. What's great also about this book is she goes into detail about different areas of finance. So um, a 529 college plan, retirement, what's the difference between 401k and IRA, um, credit cards, credit card debt, the stock market, investing, things like that. And it's just, it's a really good, easy, simple read, and I recommend it for any beginner. Another thing that she does really, really well is she has little drawings in there. She throws in fun facts, um, tips. She throws in little quizzes so that way when you're done reading, you can quiz yourself to make sure you understood what you read, which I think is so great. Um, so if you are a beginner and you don't really know where to start or what some of the finance terms mean, definitely check out her book. I think you'll love it. I will also leave some links to some various other books down in the description if you are interested in learning about a specific type of finance. Um, there's a lot of books. They're called, I call them the 101 books, but they have one on debt 101, budgeting 101, investments 101, et cetera, et cetera. So I will leave links to all those down in the description if you want to check them out. They're super cheap on Amazon. I think they're like $10 but I have about 12 of these books. I love them, super easy read. 
My fourth tip for you is to hold yourself accountable. I know a lot of times we just kind of get overwhelmed with our big picture goal and we get stressed out about it. Life happens, family happens, and sometimes it's easy to lose sight of what your goal is. And there's nothing worse than the year coming to an end or the five years, you know, coming to an end if you're a five-year planner and just feeling like you didn't accomplish anything. So whether your goal is to lose 50 pounds in a year, tell the world that you're going to lose 50 pounds. Your family and your friends will definitely hold you accountable. How's your weight loss journey going? Oh, you look great. How much have you lost? They'll kind of keep you motivated. But it's also important for you to hold yourself accountable. The only way you're going to achieve your goals is for you to reach your goals. I know that sounds lame, but nobody is going to accomplish your goals for you, so you need to hold yourself accountable. You always hear how entrepreneurs never sleep. It is true, you know, you work a nine to five job, you work on your own personal business before and after work. You don't sleep, you work hard, you achieve your goals, and Sometimes I know people like to reward themselves when they get to a certain point along the journey. Now, of course, if your goal is to pay off $10,000 in credit card debt, you are not going to go reward yourself with a $5,000 piece of jewelry or a $5,000 Chanel bag. You know, you want to keep your rewards small, but that help you stay motivated. So definitely hold yourself accountable because... Nobody is going to achieve your goals for you. And my fifth tip for you is to challenge yourself. Push yourself. When you push yourself, it is amazing what you can accomplish. There's no greater feeling than really pushing yourself and succeeding. It's just such an amazing feeling. You know, if you're on a weight loss journey and your goal is to work out five days a week, maybe one day go work out twice or work out six days that week. Really push yourself to be a little bit better than you were yesterday. If you keep challenging yourself, you're only raising your own bar, which is so important. Going back to my finance example, if your goal is to put $500 of your paycheck towards your debt, if your birthday comes up and you get $300 for your birthday, put that $300 towards your debt because there is no better feeling than paying down your debt sooner than you expected. Trust me, I have been there. And when you pay off your debt in full, the biggest weight is lifted off your shoulders. So challenge yourself. See how you can be better than yourself from yesterday and really work hard at achieving your goals. I know you guys can do it. I know the struggles that you will go through to get there. If you don't hit your goals by your end date, don't feel discouraged. Don't feel like you failed. Look back and see what all you accomplished and keep working hard until you reach your goal. It's okay to go past your end date. It's okay to, you know, take an extra two months to pay off your credit card. As long as you eventually reach your goal and don't lose sight of what your goal is, you'll be successful. So I hope these tips were helpful for you for starting the new year. I wish you guys all the best. I know that no matter what your goal is, you can achieve it. I have full faith in you. I hope that this was motivating for you. I can't wait to see what you guys achieve this year. Let me know down in the comments what your goals are for this year or for the next five years even. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe on your way out. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, you guys.